surprise me. Well, and in a free press, 100% of it would have been saying that. Now, that's just a matter of fact. It has nothing to do with left and right. Let me come up to a more modern war, which was the, uh, the Gulf War, mm -hmm. which, um, I, again, you know, looking at uh, the press in Britain and watching television, including some American television, I was very, very well aware of the anti-Gulf War dissidents, mm -hmm. the, 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 the no blood for oil campaigns. And that's not the anti-Gulf, anti the that's not the dissidents. No blood See, for in oil fact, isn't the dissidents? Uh, the, the mo no, the, the uh, Saddam Hussein's attack on Kuwait took place on August 2nd. From August, within a few days, the great fear in Washington was that Saddam Hussein was going to withdraw and leave a puppet government, which would be pretty much what the U.S. had just done in Panama. The U.S. and Britain, therefore, moved very quickly to try to undercut the danger of withdrawal. By late August, uh, negotiation offers were coming from Iraq, calling for a negotiated Iraqi withdrawal. The press wouldn't publish them here. It never published them in England. Uh, it, uh, it did leak, however. There was a great debate Connect about whether there no. should have been a negotiated Sorry, settlement. No, that was stage. not a debate. There was a debate about whether you should continue with sanctions, which is a different question. Because the fact of the matter is we have good evidence that by, late, by mid or late August, the sanctions had already worked. Because th these stories were coming from high American officials in the State Department, former American officials like Richard Helm. Uh, they couldn't get the mainstream press to cover them, so, but they did manage to get one journal to cover them, Newsday. That's a suburban journal in Long Island, the purpose obviously being to smoke out the New York Times because it's the only thing that matters. It came out in Newsday, and this continued. I won't go through the details, but this continued until January 2nd. At that time, the offers that were coming were apparently so meaningful to the State Department that State Department officials were saying that look, this is negotiable, meaningful, maybe we don't accept everything, but it's certainly a basis for negotiated withdrawal. The press would not cover it. Newsday did. Uh, a few other people did. I have a couple of op-eds on it. And to my knowledge, you can check this, the first reference to any of this in England is actually in an article I wrote in The Guardian, which was in early January. You can check and see if there's an earlier reference. Okay, let's look at one of the other key examples, which you've looked at too, um, which would appear to go against your Mm -hmm. idea, which is the Watergate. Watergate affair. is a perfect example. Where We've discussed it at length in our book, in fact, and Indeed. elsewhere. Indeed. It's a perfect example now, of the way the press was subordinated to power. But this, fact, th this brought down the president. Me, let me give you an, just a minute. Let's take a look. Uh, what happened there, uh, here it's kind of interesting, because you, know, you can't do experiments in history. But here, history was kind enough to set one, us, set, set, set one up for us. Uh, the Watergate exposures happened to take place at exactly the same time as another set of exposures, uh, namely the exposures of COINTELPRO. Oh, sorry, you have to explain it's, that. It's interesting that I have to explain it because it's vastly more significant than Watergate. That already makes my point. Uh, COINTELPRO was a program of subversion carried out not by a couple of petty crooks, but by the National Political Police, the FBI, under four administrations. It began in the late Eisenhower administration, ran up till... This is the aims at the Socialist Workers' Party no, in America. The Socialist Workers' Party was one tiny fragment of it. It began, uh, by the time it got through, I won't run through the whole story, it was aimed at the entire new left, at the woman, women's movement, at the whole black uh, 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 movement. It was extremely broad. Its actions went as far as political assassination. Now, what's the difference between the two? Very clear. In Watergate, Richard Nixon went after half of U.S. private power, namely the Democratic Party, and, and power can defend itself. So therefore, that's a scandal. He didn't do anything. Nothing happened. Look, I was on Nixon's enemies list. I didn't even know. Nothing ever happened. None, but, none, uh, but nonetheless, you wouldn't say it was an insignificant event to no, bring it was down a the president. It was a case power. where half of U.S. power defended itself against a person who had obviously stepped out of line. Uh, that's so, and, and the fact that the press thought that was important shows that they think powerful people ought to be able to defend themselves. Now, whether there was a question of principle involved happens to be easily checked in this case. Uh, one tiny part of the COINTELPRO program was itself far more significant in terms of principle than all of Watergate. And if you look at the whole program, I mean, it's not even a discussion. But you have to ask me what COINTELPRO is. You know what Watergate is. There couldn't be a more dramatic example of the subordination of the educated opinion to power here in, the, in England as well as in the United States. I know you've concentrated on uh, foreign affairs, 
and, and some of these key areas, uh, the things we've been talking about. a lot about domestic policy. But, well, uh, I'd like to come on to that, because it still seems to me that on a range of pretty important issues for the establishment, there is serious dissent. That's right. um, Gingrich um, and his neoconservative agenda in America um, has been pretty savagely lampooned. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, apparently um, fixed succession for the Republican candidacy at the presidential election has come apart. Uh, Clinton, who is a powerful figure, uh, is having great difficulty with Whitewater. Everywhere one looks, one sees disjunctures, uh, openings. Within a spectrum so narrow uh, that you really have to look hard oh. to find well, it. Well, let can, me, let can, me can, can, can I just stop you there? Because, because you say the spectrum is narrow, but on the one hand, let me we've, got, we've, we've got flat, can I tax, flat tax Republicans mm -hmm. right the way through to relatively big state Democrats. Find one. Big, big Find spectrum. a big state Democrat. The position now is exactly what Clinton said. The era of big government is over. Big government has failed. The war on poverty has failed. We have to get rid of this entitlement business. That was Clinton's campaign message in 1992. That's the Democrats. Uh, the, uh, the diff what, what you have now is a difference between sort of moderate Republicans and extreme Republicans. Actually, it's well known that there's been a long-standing sort of split in the American business community. It's not precise, but it's sort of general, between high-tech, uh, capital-intensive, internationally-oriented business, which tends to be what's called liberal, and lower-tech, more nationally-oriented, li more labor-intensive industry, which is what's called conservative. Now, between those sectors, there have been differences. And in fact, if you take a look at American politics, it oscillates pretty much between those limits. There's good work on this, incidentally. The the person who's done the most extensive work is Thomas Ferguson, his political scientist. One, one more example which will have some resonance uh, in, in Britain and Europe is the great argument over the North American Free Trade Association, mm -hmm. the NAFTA argument, where if, an interesting one. If, if there is something which one could describe as um, a global opposition movement, that is mm -hmm. uh, trade union, environmental, community-based, mm -hmm. then it was certainly present in the anti-NAFTA um, Shall I tell you what argument. happened? Well, Shall I tell you what happened? All, all I was going to say is that, that those reported. arguments were well, you no, know, we were well aware of those that arguments. That is flatly false. They were not permitted into the press, and I've documented this. I'll give you references if you like. We, could, we, we read all the pages <laughs> in Britain is all I would no, say. I did not. 